What we're going to practice today are some of the reactions that we have with ethers and epoxides. Now this first one, we have hydrobromic acid with heat and we have this type of ether. In the second reaction, we have an epoxide with an acid and ethanol. In the third reaction, we have another epoxide, but instead of an acid, we have a strong base, an ethoxide ion over here, in ethanol. In the fourth reaction that we will be doing is we have this, this alcohol group and this halogen reacted with a strong base. And this last one, we have this group substrate right here that's reacted with MCPBA and a green ard reagent. So those are the five different reactions we're going to work with today. Now this first one, how are we going to do it? Well, hydrobromic acid, we're going to have a proton flying around. And this oxygen right here with this lone pair is going to be attracted to it. So it's going to try to bond with it. Now when it does, what's going to happen is that we have three bonds on this oxygen. And knowing so, we will have a carbo, or not a carbocation, a positive charge on this oxygen. So that means one of the groups of that the oxygen is attached to has to break. Essentially, this is a good leaving group. So either this bond will break or this bond will break. Now, let's consider this bond. If we broke this bond, what would end up happening is you get a positive charge on this carbon. And this carbon is a benzene carbon. And a carbocation on a benzene carbon is extremely unstable. So what's more likely to happen is that this group will be given to the oxygen, this lone pair right here. And the bromine that's with a negative charge just floating around is going to attack this carbon. So what we end up getting is our benzene group, right, with now an alcohol, so now it's a phenol. And we got this two carbon group attacking or not, this tumor carbon group attacked by bromine. So we have this. That's all there is to it. Now, what about this epoxide with an acid? Well, same, just how with the ether was attracted to the proton, it's the same scenario over here. So now we have a positive charge on this oxygen. Now, with ethanol, let's draw this out. We have a positive charge on this oxygen. Now with ethanol, we have right here, is it going to attack this carbon right here or is it going to attack the other carbon over there? Well, ethanol is a weak nucleophile, so it's going to attack the more substituted carbon. It's easier for it. So if it attacks this back carbon right here, it's going to attack from the opposite side of which where this oxygen is. And this group right here will go back to the oxygen, so oxygen no longer has a net positive charge. So our final group will look like this. We have our cyclohexane. Now we have our ethanol on this back carbon. Now we have to notice one thing. This reaction is stereospecific. This ethanol is attacking from the opposite side of this oxygen and we get chiral carbons. That means we get ethanol going back over here. And this oxygen with the hydrogen is going to be on the opposite side of where the ethanol attacked. So over here, and this methyl group, since it's on the same carbon as which the ethanol attacked, is going to be going up. Now what about this third reaction? Over here in this third reaction, it's the same scenario where we have over here. Now instead of having rather a positive charge on the oxygen, what we end up having is just a SN2 reaction where we have a negative charge and it wants to attack the least substituted carbon. So it's going to attack this carbon right here. So this group right here is going to break and we'll end up getting a negative charge on this oxygen afterwards. But remember, we're in ethanol, so it can easily just abstract a proton and get one anyways. So this group will break. So we'll get our ethoxide ion will attack this carbon. This bond will break and go to this oxygen over here. And we'll end up with this carbon being connected to the methyl group and the oxygen, while on this carbon over here will be connected to the ethoxide ion. So our final product will look something like this, where we have our cyclohexane. And on the top carbon, like we said, we have our oxygen group. Let's make it going up. Let's make it going up over here. It's going to be opposite to where that thoxide attacked. And so this methyl group is going to be on the same side as our thoxide. So that's it for the first three. Now what about these last two? So in the second to last one over here, we have a strong base, so we have our hydroxide ion. And so since it has a negative charge, it wants to get a proton. 
So it's going to attack this one right here. So if it does attack that one, what will end up happening is we're going to have is we're going to have a negative charge on this oxygen. So it wants to attack something, but what is it going to attack? Well, it can attack this carbon right here in an intra SN2 mechanism, and it's going to form a ring with this one, two, three, four carbon chain. So what we end up happening having is that this oxygen attacks this carbon, and this chlorine just takes the lone pair and leaves, and we end up getting with a one, two, three, four, and then the oxygen. So we have our four membered ring, right? And we have our methyl group on the first one, so right here. So that's actually all we get. It's just an intra SN2 mechanism. Now, what about this last one? So this last one, I put two steps into it. And the first step is MCPBA, and the second step is second step is a Grignard reaction. Now, what does MCPBA do? MCPBA creates an epoxide. So it can either create an epoxide on this Car it, these two carbons because it has a pi bond or it can create it on these two. Now if we create an epoxide like this what ends up happening is that we have a partial positive on these two carbons and this is important to notice because we have two, car two different groups that have a double bond. We have these two carbons and we have these two carbons and so we have to consider which one is more reactive, which one's more likely to create an epoxide. Well, I'm going to say it's this one, because if we have an epoxide right here, we have partial positives on a secondary and a tertiary carbon, versus over here where we just have it on a secondary and a secondary. And so this is actually more reactive, and we're more likely to get an epoxide on these two carbons. So as an intermediate, we will have the cyclohexane, but now an epoxide on this group right here, and the methyl group, and then we just have this side group, the double bond that's not going to react. Now with a Grignard reagent, what is it going to do? Well, we have a two carbon chain connected to MgBr. And if you notice, Mg, which is magnesium, has a positive charge, so this carbon has a negative charge. So it's going to act like a strong nucleophile, just like in our last reaction with the epoxide. And so it's just going to attack the least hindered carbon, which is this one right here. So this bond's going to break and go to the oxygen. And so we're gonna have an anti-addition where we have our cyclohexane, right? The Grignard reagent is going to attack from the opposite side of where this oxygen is going to be. So let's say if it goes down here, what ends up, or sorry, wrong carbon. If it goes down here, the oxygen is going to be on the opposite side. So going, be, it's going to go up. And after it gets protonated in the solution, it's just going to be an OH group. The methyl group is going to be opposite of where this oxygen is. And then we just have our final group over here just sitting and doing nothing. So that's it for these reactions. So just to reiterate what we did today, the first reaction was just it was just an ether reaction with a strong acid. The second one was an epoxide with an acid, and this is called an acid catalyzed reaction or epoxide opening. This right here was a base catalyzed epoxide opening. This last, this fourth one, we just had a ether reaction essentially. We just created an ether by having intra SN2 mechanism. On this last one, we just created an epoxide using MCPBA, which is a peroxy acid, and then broke the epoxide using a Grignard reagent or organometallic material. So that is all.